thought they had a second to recover from UFC 280 and were already being slapped in the face with a big old slimy fish of UFC 281. But we like it, you know? We're into it. You know? Who fucking knows? Heading up this stacked card, which, yes, chill out, we will be watching together next week, just like we watched UFC 280 together. Maybe not just like we watched that one together. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm no thank you, sir. Heading up the stacked card is a, a very dramatic, if very premature, matchup between dominant, long-standing, middleweight champion Israel Adesanya and his kickboxing foe Alex Pereira. I've spoken before about this long stewing rivalry and why this fight is so interesting to many fans, so I ain't gonna repeat myself, but let's get you up to speed. We all know by now that Alex Pereira entered the UFC with a real fucking chip on his shoulder. How dare Izzy be considered one of the greatest martial arts in the whole damn world, celebrated on such a huge platform when Alex has beaten him twice. But Alex, baby, that's kickboxing. This is a different ball game. Izzy has done more than enough to earn his crown and you've got to do a hell of a lot more to get a chance to take it off of him, in my H opinion. And if you want to watch the full version, I'll link that for you on the end screen. In fact, I have a couple of videos on Izzy, so you should probably spend a super wholesome, I guess, afternoon just watching those tucked under a blanket with a hot chocolate and a bowl of soup. What's more wholesome than soup? Swiss cheese. Ah! The only thing that's really changed since I made that video is that Izzy had a strategic yet largely unexciting fight against Jarek and Nia, and Alex earned a few Lolly's good graces points by wiping the floor with Perhat Podzelupne, Sean Strickland. What hasn't changed is my belief that it's an unreasonable decision by the UFC. If we're going purely on the love of the sport, as opposed to the love of big old bucks, to let Alex potentially win an MMA championship, having only used his kickboxing. And after that performance that Bobby Knuckles put on at UFC Paris, I would have rather seen that trilogy. The thing is, if it was just a belt wrapped around the waist of Robert Whittaker that I wanted to see, an easier path to said future would be to take it off of Alex Pereira using his wrestling. But it's not that. It's the high level MMA that both Izzy and Whittaker always deliver. It's the unanswered questions. And if Whitaker wins the third matchup, it's the edge of the seat freaking drama. Now don't get me wrong, there's plenty of drama <laughs> coming into the Izzy and Pereira fight, but it's manufactured, it's got that chemical taste to it. All that being said, it's relentless and it's hard not to get caught up in it. Here are some of the highlights. <laughs> Jap, you can't ignore it. I'm transforming now these cars and planes. I'm always boarding. So we have beef 
we have history, but do we really have any idea how this fight is going to play out based on the two previous matchups? No. End video. People seem to think that because we have seen these two square up twice before that we have all the data we need to make a reasoned prediction. Let's talk about all the ways in which none of that means shit. All the ways in which those two sports are just completely different kettles of fish. I've mentioned fish twice in the last few minutes. You really are getting all the high quality content your heart could ever desire. The high quality marine biology content that you really came here looking for. Kickboxing versus MMA or 101, welcome to the classroom. Permitted moves seems as good a place to start as any. In kickboxing, you can land punches with the padded part of the glove as well as kicks from the stand-up. You can land single knees briefly from the clinch as the clinch itself is brief, but elbows are a no-go. Everything about kickboxing is designed to produce fast-paced, action-packed stand-up battles. That's why they exclude moves found in other disciplines such as dumps dumps, lol, because they slow down the pace. Basically, you get up close and personal and you don't really leave that pocket until the bell rings or someone's head does. But that's pretty much the last thing you want if you're playing a smart MMA game. And Izzy does play a smart MMA game, perhaps the smartest. He's a master of distance, which we'll talk about in a minute, but also timing and pace. Moving in unpredictable ways that have a rhythm, but not a rhythm that anyone else is attuned to but Izzy. And with MMA, there are so many more weapons. Call back to Sean Strickland, am I right? Almost every type of punch, kick, elbow, knee, you can land on a viable target, as well as mad things like shoulder strikes and forearms. And that's before you even start to weave in extensive clinching, ground and pound, grappling, and submissions, which is a whole encyclopedia in itself of ways of winning. You know, joint locks cranks, chokeholds, on and on and on we go. But no one thinks grappling is gonna play a part in this fight. They think, they, the community, think that it's just gonna be chapter three of their kickboxing matchup. Chael Sonnen said it's an ego thing. He said that neither one of them would be able to sleep if they shot for a takedown. All right, Chael. You think Izzy's gonna sleep soundly if he loses because he hasn't used every single tool in his toolbox, but at least he didn't, what, use a tool in his toolbox? Fuck off, Jail. Adesanya is going to do everything in his power to protect everything that he has worked for in this sport. This is his dominion, and this is his fucking legacy we're talking about. I believe he'll use every single advantage that he has, and he has the fucking advantage as an MMA fighter. Considering grappling is a factor, let's talk about how it changes the game. We've already mentioned in a roundabout sort of suggestive way <laughs> that it makes fighters less likely to just throw wildly. Getting too aggressive or getting too light on your feet or too short a stance opens you up to be taken down, which isn't something that either fighter had to concern themselves with previously. Now Izzy's had longer to adjust his style to work more effectively in MMA, and Alex's fresh-faced enthusiasm could just be exploited. Don't get me wrong, unless Izzy has completely changed who he is as a fighter in order to really widen that competitive advantage, I don't think grappling is going to play a huge part in the story, but Izzy has been focused on MMA and improving his wrestling and grappling for a hell of a lot longer than Alex has. To add balance to this argument for a second, I am balanced. Let's talk about one of the ways in which MMA really does favour Parada. Dining gloves. Alex's most straightforward path to victory is always going to be to use his size, strength and power to land that infamous left hook. He's a knockout artist and has pretty much forged his entire very successful career around this one weapon. His jabs, body shots, rear straights and even his kicks are all just foreplay to the left hook. And he already, in kickboxing and the bigger gloves, had unbelievable power. So he doesn't even look like he's loading up. And bang, 
lights out. Small gloves make it easier to hit harder. Even in the clinch and when hand fighting, the smaller gloves mean that those nasty ass parader shots can pretty much sneak in from anywhere. But that's only if he can find Izzy in the octagon. Kickboxing takes place in a ring, and a ring means corners. I know, it doesn't make sense. It's baffling why it was ever called a ring, but we move. And kickboxing rings are small. In the bigger, rounder octagon, you know what I mean, Izzy can better use his feints and his footwork to get that space and distance where he thrives. In the octagon, Izzy avoids danger like pretty much nobody else. And Parida relies on danger. Why are my shoulders up here? He's unlikely to win on points. Izzy just outsmarts everybody. So he needs to find a way to read Izzy to stop that weird motion and land the left. Speaking of paths to victory, we have some differences in scoring between the two sports as well. In a lot of kickboxing organizations, if you retreat, the judges will score against you. So Izzy's back up and counter style does not score well in kickboxing. In MMA, he can fight at distance, pop in his jabs and kicks from range, and rack up the points. He can use his unwieldy style to throw his opponents off, building up those singular shots across rounds and just inching his way forward. He doesn't look to KO his opponents. He doesn't fight on emotion, which will serve him well in this matchup against a discernible foe. He uses his brain. Swinging and hoping is a dumb boy's game. And the longer this goes, potentially, the better is his chances. Not just to rack up the significant shots, but to draw upon his experience in terms of cardio. This will be his seventh title defense. He's been fighting five rounders for longer than Alex has been fighting in MMA. He's faced the best in the world under the brightest lights. This will be Alex's first time. And in kickboxing, rounds are much shorter, as well as this. And this is both like a cardio point, but also like a strategy point. In kickboxing, if you get knocked down, you get 10 counts to recover. And if you get knocked down three times in one round or four times over the fight, it counts as a TKO victory for the other guy. In their second kickboxing matchup, Izzy knocked Alex down. And so who knows what might have happened if he had the opportunity to jump on that, to pile on the strikes once he smelled blood. Maybe we'll get to sort of find out. I truly believe that this fight favours Izzy in almost every way. Yes, Parada could land that lucky left shot and it will just be a replay of their second matchup. But there's so much more to MMA than that, and if not Izzy, someone will soon show Parade of that. And I don't think it's fair to the rest of the roster, and anyone who values high-level MMA, that he already has a belt around his waist when he learns that lesson. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, come hang out over on Insta, and I have a Twitter now, if you can imagine such a thing. And I'll link them both in the description. You don't have to guess. They'll be right there for you, easy money. And I'll see you next week when we get to see it all played out and the questions answered. I fucking love this sport. Can we take a moment?